Temple, Ohio State, and Pittsburgh. The Buckeyes have that fine running tradition. This year is no different. Keith Byers is the second leading scorer in the country. But he'll be up against a tough Pittsburgh defense, one of the best in America. It's a battle of two ranked teams in the Fiesta Bowl. Then it's on to Pasadena for the granddaddy of them all. In the Ohio State defense, it's their pass secondary. Overall on the season, Fazio 8-2-1 in his second year as head coach of the Pitt Panthers. The classic matchup, Bob, that we have talked about, Ohio State and Pitt, first time in 30 years these and two teams have met. Two great traditions, Charlie, as we've talked about, and really they should have been playing before. Yes. But they will start playing next year, I think. For Got the off to the season. slow start, won the first two, then lost the next two. Then they, they tied Penn State at the coverage. Season here on January the 2nd. And here it is. Woolridge at the 4 to the 10, 15, 20. Good return underway to the 30. Almost breaks it. 32 yards on the return. Now let's take a look at the offensive set. That's the Pittsburgh offense, Bill Wallace. So everybody a little bit nervous on bowl day. For Ohio State, of course, it'll be Mike Tomczak, the starting quarterback. The key that Bob talked about, Keith Byers, the tailback, number 41. There's Tomczak. 36-yard line. They open up with play action. Going to Thad Jimison, and it is incomplete. And we open up with a bit of surprise. You expect to see them open up with this man, quarterback Tom, Mike Tomzak, handing off to uh, Byers with the fullback. Vaughn Broaden actually weighs 250 blocking. That's not the way they open. Keith Byers will be the tailback. Thad Jemison, number 88, at one wide receiver. Cedric Anderson will be the other one. And the tight end is John Frank, all Big Ten. Second down and 10 from the 36-yard line. And here's Byers. Fires to the 45, 50, and then pulled out of bounds after a gain of 16 yards by Tom Flynn. It is a first down. There's the tight end, John Frank, number 89. Left tackle, Bill Roberts. Kirk Laudermilk at left guard. Excellent center in Joe Dooley. Scott Zielinski on the right side, along with Mark Carraway. The ball at the pit, 48-yard line. First down, Ohio State. That's Broadnax, first back through. From the 48 to the 43, a gain of five, second and five. So we'll look now at the Panther defense. Wing Glikowski at left end. Big Al, 13 sacks. Jim Quince at left tackle. The middle guard is Dennis Atia from Allentown. Bill Moss at right tackle. Chris Dolman at defensive right end. Second down and five at the pit 43-yard line. Buckeyes opening drive of the game. Tom Jack to throw. Good protection. Drops it off right side to Byers. Fires out of bounds inside the 35. We'll call it the 34-yard line. And he will pick up the first down. Steve Apke was there along with Troy Hill. Defensively, Apke, he's a freshman. His first start replacing Al Desert, who is out with an injury. Troy Benson, middle linebacker. Troy Hill at left cornerback. Melvin Dean on the right side. Strong safety, Weatherspoon. And the free safety is Tom Flynn. First down for Ohio State. Checking off, Bob. Little play action fake. Good reception. John Frank. Twice an academic All-American. He said, why do they say I'm academic? Why do they say I'm all Big Ten? <laughs> he, He's he a good one. He should be. He is an excellent one. Tom Zach has checked off twice already in this drive. There he saw the coverage being 
and in the two deep zone he checked to Frank coming across Pittsburgh of course is expecting them to go to Frank on little delays crossing pattern they've already done it twice in the ball game successfully gain of eight second down and two we have set the cast of characters for this drive and the stampede right now offensively is underway as Tom Zach, the quarterback, carries, Bill Moss makes the tackle for the Panthers. But you set it up at the top of the show. It is the offense of the Buckeyes, a controlled offense, but a very strong offense. They put a lot of points on the board. Apke, the freshman linebacker who is replacing Aldezert, getting a little bit of taste of the, the power of the offensive uh, line of the Ohio State Buckeyes. It was second down and two at the 26, a gain of three to the 23, and it is a first down. Zelensky and Lachey will alternate at right guard as a messenger service for the Buckeyes. First down, 23-yard line of fifth. Little play action fake deep, has a receiver open, hits him inside the five. It is Thad Jemison, the senior from Cincinnati, and Tom Flynn, Drops him after a gain of 20 yards on the play at the three-yard line. First down, goal to go. It's a great shot of Foge Fazio scratching his head. He's not used to his defense being run over like this. Tom Zach checks off the same check that he did a couple of minutes ago. The same coverage in the secondary. This time, Frank goes short. He is covered, and he throws the ball deep downfield. Good reception. First down inside the five. The eighth play of the drive. An impressive opening drive by the Buckeye. Against this very tough defense. Super fake by Tom Zach to Broadnax. The defense went after Broadnax. Tom Zach scores this touchdown. That is the first touchdown that Tom Zach has scored this season. We'll take another look. He's going to fake to Broadnax, 38. Broadnax carries it a lot, sees a big hole inside, runs it in for the touchdown. Pittsburgh's defense, one of the tops in the country, is only used to allowing an average of 12 points a game. They are not used to having another team come out in the opening drive and stuff it right down their throats for a touchdown. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. Rich Spangler. Ohio State with their first opportunity on offense, and they certainly showed deep, the deep back of the three backs for the Panthers. And Bailey takes it at the 13 to the 20, and he returns just across the 25-yard line. The 1984 Fiesta Bowl is being brought to you by Toyota Pitt moving on offense from their own 26-yard line. The quarterback is John Conjimmy. In the last seven games, throwing for 13 touchdowns, only one interception, and he opens up with a connection to his tight end, Clint Wilson. Let's take a look at the lineups for Pitt as Roland Tatum made the last stop. Can Jimmy the quarterback, 57% completion average. Mark Bailey will be the starting fullback, although, of course, McIntyre will be in there. Joe McCall, do it all McCall for Pitt. Bill Wallace will be the split in. He's the leading receiver. Dwight Collins will be the flanker. He's been bothered by injuries. The tight end is Clint Wilson. 36-yard line, a gain of 10 on the opening play and a first down. And we have flags flying, so we'll sort that out, the first penalty of the ballgame. So Pittsburgh opening up through the air as we, possibly, as we thought that they might. They realize, too, that they have to open the ballgame up Make the Buckeyes cover the entire length of the field, and the best way to do that is to start throwing the football. Left tackle, Bill Fraley, all world. Eighth in the Heisman Trophy. Balloting will be profiling him and looking at him. Procedure on the offense, first down. Legal procedure on the offense, Drundo at left guard, and of course, we'll see Greg Christie in there also. Jim Sweeney, outstanding center, third team All-America. On the right side, Petty John, Bob Brown will see some action at right guard. Tony Brown, the right tackle. We go back to the action. Here's McCall. From the 36 to the 43. A gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Charlie, we expected to see an offensive game, and we have not been disappointed so far. Defensively, Dave Cresselius at left tackle for the Buckeyes. Spencer Nelms at middle guard. 
Dave Morrill. Now he'll be opposite Freilich. That's a great matchup we'll be watching. Orlando Lowry, one of the linebackers. Clark Backus, another linebacker. Second down, about three and a half yards to go for the first down. This will be close as McCall gets the call. And Roland Tatum makes the tackle. They'll spot it at about the 46, maybe the 47-yard line. There's Roland Tatum, number 32. Byron Lee, 82, will be the outside linebacker. And Tatum and Lee, most of the time, will be on the same side, and they will flop. Sean Gale at right cornerback. Kelvin Bell at safety. Doug Hill will be the rover. That's, in reality, a strong safety. Garcia Lane, the left cornerback, and also a punt return specialist. So now we have set all of the players, and we have a first down. In case you just joined us, an impressive opening drive of 64 yards in eight plays by Ohio State, with Mike Tomczak, the quarterback, going in from three yards out. And now the Panthers have fit their first opportunity on offense, starting at their own 26. Moving on now to their 47-yard line, and they picked up a couple of first downs in round. 11.45, time remaining in the first quarter. And Jimmy, incomplete. Bill Wallace, the intended receiver. Wallace with 37 receptions, 630 yards coming into the game, a 17-yard average. Uh, well, he had some lack of confidence. As the season wore on, he became more and more confident of his abilities. Here you see him read the coverage very well, throws it over the short man, Tatum, just has to throw it to the outside. Good coverage there by Bell. Second down and 10. McCall. Good continuing effort. He has five to the 48-yard line of Ohio State. It'll be third down and five. Roland Tatum. And Kelvin Bell making the tackle for the Buckeyes. <laughs> I'll, I'll say Kelvin Bell made the tackle. He kind of finished him off. I was just happy to see him getting up. McCall, three carries, 20 yards in this opening drive for the Panthers. <laughs> Give you a correction on the graphic. Third down and five. To Jimmy, far side, first down. Dwight Collins, number 32, a gain of 13. Smart call by Kinjemi. He saw the cornerback lined up to the inside, checked off to a little quick out. All he needed was five yards. Collins gets it and then gets a little bit more upfield, but that was a very smart call by the young quarterback. Collins with ankle problems on and off throughout this complete season. Ankle problems here preparing for the Fiesta Bowl, but he may be able to play the whole ball game. He is a good one. Second team All-American. 34-yard line of Ohio State first down. Play action pass. Looping timing play down the sideline. Perfect throw to Bill Wallace. First down, a gain of 11. Sean Gale with the tackle. And Bob, you called it. If the Buckeyes have a weakness that's in the defensive secondary. Defensive secondary, the strength of their team is their offense, their defensive secondary. A good play action fake lays it over the short cornerback. The safety Gale didn't get over there in time. Excellent play. They moved the ball right down the field. A gain of 17 yards to the 17. McCall right side, 16-yard line, just one. Roland Tatum is there. Tatum, the leading tackler for the Buckeyes, averaging 13 stops a ball game. Second down, they mark it for no gain, so it'll be second down and 10 when they spot the football. This is the area of the field, Charlie. They like to go to their, their, their number one receiver, Wallace. Right side knocked away. Good defensive play. Wallace, the intended receiver, and Garcia Lane knocked it down. All Big Ten honors on defense and leads the conference in punt returns. We'll be seeing a lot of him today. Number 12. It's another uh, out pattern down inside the 15-yard line. Eric Lane, number 12, sees it very, very well. 
Great play by Lane. Take a look at 79 in blue, Bill Fralick, one of the top offensive linemen in the country. We'll be watching him and his battle with Morrow all day today. They're down in 10. And Jimmy into the corner of the end zone. No. Dwight Collins, the intended receiver, Sean Gale, was there for the defense. Snuffy Everett coming in with a field goal attempt upcoming. And Jimmy to hold. And Tony McNally coming in for the snap. Impressive thing about that throw, Charlie. It wasn't It wasn't complete. There was, uh, he was not open on the play, but he threw it where his man only could catch the ball. There was no chance of an interception. From the 23-yard line, an attempt of 33 yards. Hits the upright. Bounces away. It is nothing. now in a tailback for the Buckeyes is John Wildred. Ah! Replacing buyers. You'll see action enough. He's a sophomore, not a freshman. A little correction in the graphic. And he can move. Wildred. Averaging 5.3 yards a carry. When Grakowski and Tom Flynn make the tackle. 35 yard line gain of 15 first down ground and now level. Byers will come back in ground level view the Pittsburgh defense is frustrated at this point already Charlie they were moving around trying to show some different fronts for the Ohio State offensive line the line just opened up the holes are running right through them at this point in the ball game first down Ohio State on their own 35 yard line Keith Byers all Big Ten, sophomore, rushing yardage, 1,126 during the season. You know, Charlie Broadnax wears number 38, but he could just as well wear 68 because he's like a guard. Here we see him going back in motion, going to block in over the middle. Right there, he stuffs Apke, number 50, and they just push him back. And that's a lead blocker weighing 252 pounds. He weighs more than 10 of the 11 players on the <laughs> Pittsburgh defense. Gain of eight, second down and two. This is a passing formation that they're showing on second and two. But they run off of it instead. Normally they show pass off of it. Brodnax, the ball carrier, when Grakowski and Moss make the tackle, 48-yard line of pit. It's a first down. Gain of nine. The sixth first down in the ball game for the Buckeyes. Ball placed down on the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. Nine yards pick up. Anderson goes wide to the far side. Jimison is wide to the near side. Here comes the tailback. Here comes the tailback. Play action fake to the tailback. And a sack for the Panthers. Bob Shilkin now in at middle guard. Makes the play for Pitt. Maybe the incentive they need, they have to do something to stop Ohio State's offense. And as an offensive coach for Ohio State, you say, why did we ever abandon our run? Because here we go to the pass, and we get a setback. Instead of first and 10, now we have second and 18. We lose our momentum for the moment. Back at the 43-yard line. There's Bob Shilkin, the sophomore from Pittsburgh. Only a pair of sacks during the season. He has the first one here. Byers comes back with three yards to the 46. So it'll be third down 15. Bill Moss making the tackle, along with Steve Apke, the freshman. One of the things Foge Fazio said they would try to do is slant their linemen to try to keep the big offensive lineman off of, off of Apke. Apke is very quick, moves very well, but he doesn't weigh a lot. He has trouble with linemen coming right at him. Keith Byers, three carries, 27 yards, a nine-yard average. Third down and 15, and jumping off sides is Bill Moss. Was he drawn? We'll wait and see. Shilkin also moving into the neutral zone. And it will be a false start pulled off by the Buckeyes. And today, later on, of course, in the ball game, we'll be naming the Toyota most valuable player for the Fiesta Bowl. And the university, either Ohio State or Pitt, 
will receive a special trophy in his honor. In addition, Toyota will donate $1,000 to be shared equally by the general scholarship funds of both universities in honor of the participation in today's game. After the penalty, it's third down and 20. Passes to Tom Byers, the intended receiver. It is incomplete. Ray Weatherspoon had very tough coverage. Well, he had good vision. By that, I mean he saw the play coming the entire time. As we'll take another look, Byers didn't see Weatherspoon coming. That, that play right there will intimidate the receivers for Ohio State. Weatherspoon and the entire secondary, very tough hitters for the Panthers. Punting situation for down Carl Edwards, kicking to Tom Flynn. Flynn feels it at the 23-yard line. He's to the 35, the 40. Returns to the 48-yard line. 25 yards on the return. Weatherspoon with the Good block leading out in front of 37 yard kick and it was the punter Carl Edwards who made the tackle and saved the touchdown. Wait up, this inventory. We've got too many sardines, not enough salmon. We all can see it coming. <laughs> all right, here's Pitt from their own 48 yard line. First down, Joe McCall. Maybe a yard. See where they spotted. Byron Lee with the tackle. You may mark it for no gain. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy. 5.55, time remaining. We're in the first quarter of the Fiesta Bowl. Ohio State 7, and the Panthers have pit nothing. Second and nine. At the pit 49-yard line, here's Jimmy, the quarterback. Left side pass is complete to Joe McCall, and he'll have two, maybe three yards. Orlando Lowry was there for Ohio State. It's not unusual, Charlie, in college football to see the plays being sent in either by signal or by a shuttle service, but I'm very impressed with both quarterbacks, both Tom Zach and Kajemi, at their presence at the line of scrimmage and how much they know what's going on, they see the coverage, and they'll check to the area that's vulnerable. Joe McCall has rushed five times for 21 yards total. Pretty well shut down the last two times out there. Here's Kim Jimmy. Throws, pull down. Good reception as he goes over the middle to Bill Wallace at the 44-yard line. A gain of five. So it will be shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down and still a couple to go. Lowry with the tackle. Take a look at number 79, Bill Fralick at the top in blue against Morrow. Two of the top players on the field in the pits. Freilich holds him off long enough to get the ball off. And an early gamble by the Panthers. Fourth down and two. They go with two tight ends. Wilson and Johnson. Fourth down and two. Over the top is McCall. 41-yard line. He needed two. He got three. It'll be a first down. Are you surprised? with that kind of a gamble this early. No, I'm not, Charlie. This is an excellent call. You just need a little penetration by your offensive lineman. You're in good field position. If you turn the ball over, it's about the 40-yard line. You've got a good defense. In a game like this, this early in the ball game, I think it's a good call. Joe McCall, 20th in the nation in running, and he was airborne. You almost had to take his hang time. First down. Play action. The Jimmy's going to run for it. To the 35. Then slides close to the 33-yard line. Roland Tatum was there to cover him. And a very smart play for the quarterback to go down because part of his responsibility is to come back to the huddle for the next play. Exactly. He is no good to his team on the sideline if he gets injured. Get upfield, get as much as you can, and then say, okay, the party's over. Let me get down, and I'll go back to the huddle and call another play. Gain of seven to the 34-yard line. It'll be second down and three. Ohio State territory, Ohio State leading 7-0. Here's McCall. Gain of about three on the play. It'll be in the neighborhood of the first down. We'll take another look at it as the officials check the chains on the sideline. <laughs> 
If you wonder why Pittsburgh is running to their left, it's because of Fralick 79 just clears out Morrow on that side. Brown 72 pulls and blocks the rest of the men. Good play by the Panthers. It is third down, less than a yard to go for the first down. Here's the double tight end, Shad and McCall. Left side and is behind the blocking of Bill Fralick, and we have a flag drop back at the 39-yard line. It is against the Panthers, and that will erase the first down. One of the things Foge Fazio told us about this ball game is he wanted to keep his offense on the field a lot to keep the ball away from the stampeding uh, offense of the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes. So far, he's been able to do that, except for the first drive. Motion called against Pittsburgh, seventh play of the current drive. The first drive took 11 plays, led to a field goal attempt by Snuffy Everett from 33 yards. It was no good hitting the upright. So it is third down, five and a half to go for the first down. Rolling right is Jimmy. He's being chased. It is incomplete. Darrell Clark, the flanker, was the closest receiver, and it was Byron Lee, the sophomore from Columbus, number 82, who was chasing him down. Play action fake gave Lee 82 time to get upfield. You really don't like to have play action fakes when it's third and five, third and six yards because it gives the defensive end, as Lee is, up time to get upfield and contain the quarterback, and he couldn't get outside to do what he wanted to do. Can Jimmy has completed five of nine passes for 50 yards. And here's another fourth down gamble at the 36-yard line of Ohio State. But again, they have good field position. Out of field goal range. Incomplete. Wallace, the intended receiver. Orlando Lowry was there, number 37, knocked it down. The offensive line of the Pittsburgh Panthers trying to get him going. Ohio State from their own 36 yard line, first down. Vaughn Broadnax to the 41, where Bill Moss and Steve Apke make the tackle. It's a gain of five, second down and five. Now let's check the Fiesta Bowl record book. 1973, most rushing attempts. It is held by two men. First, Tony Dorsett with 30 carries. And that was against Arizona State in the 1980 in the Fiesta Bowl. John Wildridge, the tailback. From the 41 to about the 43 yard line, a gain of a couple, so it'll be third down and still about three to go for the first down. Troy Benson and Steve Apke were there for the Panther defense. Woolridge alternating with Byers at tailback. We'll also see Roman Bates in there, and we could even see Kelvin Lindsay, but most of the time it will be Byers. Boge Fazio, head coach of the Panthers. The record eight, two, and one. Third down three. Watch your food. Too much time. 25 second violation. Time to operate once you're there. Right guard Jim Lachey and Scott Zielinski, the messenger service. Complete first down. Thad Jemison, 45-yard line, a gain of 17. They needed eight. Troy Hill with the tackle. Play action fake, which is always good when you give the ball to 41 Byers so much. Reed discovered very well. Throws it right where he should, right high where he can catch the football. Good play on first down. Thad Jemison, two receptions, 37 yards, first down at the pit, 45. A fumble on the exchange from the center to the quarterback. And it's a turnover. The Panthers have the football. In turnovers this year, Ohio State is plus seven, and the Panthers a bit plus five. So we have a break in the action and a break for Pitt. Ohio State leads it 
seven to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. In her exchange, the quarterback may have pulled out a little too soon. Looking for the ball, number 50, Apke, the freshman we've been talking about, finds it, grabs it, holds on to it. Bit from their own 43, first down. McCall. McCall to the 47 or the 48-yard line. It'll be about five Spencer Nelms with the tackle, and there's the freshman, Steve Apke from Cincinnati, 6'2 and a half, 185, big fumble recovery. Just following his blocking, McCall says, I'm going where the blue shirts are. Runs out of blue shirts and says, it's time to take the medicine. That was Pitt's 20th offensive play in the ball game. In the first two drives, they gained 83 yards, but they came up empty. McCall, eight carries, 30 yards. And here he comes again. Good defensive play. Stopped at the line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line. It will be no gain, third down and five. And Dave Cresselius is the man who made the tackle. And with that play, time runs out in the first period. So, in the Fiesta Bowl book, we have one complete. But still the young quarterback and Jimmy, he was looking to Wallace, as, as was the secondary of the Buckeyes. He steps up in the pocket with all the attention to Wallace. McCall slips by lane, number 12, gets down the sideline, and it's a perfect throw, and it's a big play. First down just outside of the 10-yard line. Two tight ends on the offensive set. McCall's second reception, 44 yards receiving. McCall again, a gain of a couple on the play. Dave Morrow with the tackle. Statistically, the first period. Ohio State leading 7-0. And Pitt right now trying to tie it up. Mark Bailey. Bailey spinning to the five-yard line. He has three. It'll be third down there. And you can say it's third down and five because in reality, if they come up inches shy of the goal line, they could pick up a first down. Back us with the tackle. 79, Bill Fralick against 57, Morrow. The ongoing battle. Morrow gives him a little slip. Fralick says, I don't like it. I'm going to get a linebacker. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was Bailey's first trip. <laughs> Yes, Fraley does have a tendency to pick up two or three defensive players. Rolling right, there's a toss from Pahokee, Florida. He's a junior. Sean Gale and Pepper Johnson went up with him, but Wilson came down with the football. A little sprint out, option, run or pass. Gives the quarterback some time to look around. And when you said, Charlie, he threw it into a crowd. Watch this crowd. White shirts are everywhere. I'm not so sure he wasn't throwing it to Collins deep in the end zone, but Wilson jumped up and made the catch. Extra point is up, and it is good. So Snuffy Everett splits the uprights, and we have a tie. Ohio State 7 and Pitt 7 with 13.25 left to go in the first half, and there is a catch in a crowd. We'll be back with a kickoff. To bowl 7 7 die. This just starts the day on NBC as Vian Court kicking off. Of course, we'll be followed by the Rose Bowl and the Orange Bowl. So stay with us now as Woolridge returns for the Buckeyes. Up the middle to the 20 yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown pass between John Conjimmy and his tight end, Clint Wilson. Good shot of Conjimmy and his face as he rolls out. Good protection. Wilson, I think, is saying, sees that ball in the air. He says, I'm 6'3". I'm going to go up and catch it. Even though it was maybe for Collins, I'm going to go up and get that touchdown. So now the Buckeyes go by for 45. Could Jimmy 7 of 12 for 97 and a touchdown? Byers gets the call, and he'll get a yard, maybe two. Steve Apke, the freshman who set up the drive with a fumble recovery and 54, Troy Benson. And now the Panther defense beginning to assert itself. Spotted at the 22-yard line, gain of two, second down and eight. Roman Bates now in a tailback as Byers comes out for a breather. to Broadnax and then the pitch outside to Bates and the defense is there 
led by number 50, Steve Abke, and Ray Weatherspoon, the strong safety. Weatherspoon, number nine, makes an excellent play by getting upfield and forces the play back into the inside where Apke can make the play. Good defensive play by Weatherspoon. Apke moving from laterally left to right. His uh, strength really in this ball game doesn't weigh much, about 220, but can move laterally very well. Replacing Caesar Aldersert, the junior at that spot, who is out of the ball game with a knee injury. A loss of a couple, third down and 10, pass far side complete. Buckeyes come back with a first down. Thad Jimison, number 88, 17 yards on the play. Melvin D was there for Pitt, but the Buckeyes pull this one out on third and 10 at their own 20. Really was, Charlie, just a little, little play action fake and a roll to the left. The, the thing that make this play, both wide receivers were on the wide side of the field. The inside receiver broke to the out. The outside receiver broke in. And there really wasn't much to it, except that they had a lot of yardage over there with the college hash marks being where they are. Three receptions, 54 yards for Jemison. And we still have 11.54 left to go in the first half. Second back through, fires back at the ball game from the 37 to the 41. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Troy Benson with the tackle. Apke, number 50, alongside of Benson, 54, the veteran and the freshman, moving laterally. Reads it, Benson gets there first, Apke finishes him off. I have a feeling that both ball clubs may be a little, little nervous in the first quarter. Now beginning to settle into their normal game plan. I think the defensive line of the Pittsburgh Panthers is keeping the offensive line off those linebackers. Here's Byers on the pitch. That is his sixth carry of the ball game. Tom Flynn makes the tackle from the 41 to the 46, a gain of five. So he now has 38 yards in his six carries. He just ran out of real estate. That's the work back to the short side where the hash marks are. Cedric Anderson, the wide receiver, comes out. Judd Groza, that's Luke Groza's son, is in as a tight end. A double tight end on the set. Third down, a yard and a half to go for the first down. And it's going to be in the neighborhood. Keith Byers carrying. Apke again, very active. They're going after the freshman in his first start. But he has reacted very well. Here's our guard where number 38, Vaughn Broadnax, on Weatherspoon, stands him up. That's a plus block for the uh, fullback, Broadnax. Whenever you can hold your man and let your running back get past him. You fourth down and yardage, go for it. Earl Bruce is going to go for it here on fourth down. This is a little bit more of a gamble than what Foch Fazio went for earlier because this ball is on his side of the 50-yard line. At the Ohio State 47, Bob Maggs has come in at center, replacing Joe Dooley. Quarterback sneak. Needed about four inches. Should have gotten it. But let's just make sure. It's there. I think this, if this was the last game of the year, that Earl Bruce would have gone for that against the University of Michigan in his own territory. <laughs> but it's the last game of the season. It's the Fiesta Bowl, but the first game of next year, 1984. Fumble on the exchange. Tom Zach falls on it. And that's the second time they've had a problem with the, uh, that we've seen a problem with the exchange. See, Tom Zach talking to his center. The problem is sometimes, Charlie, the quarterback will sprint to his right and the center will turn to his left to block and the ball will not get all the way up to where the quarterback's hands are. It's a combination quarterback leaving a little too soon and the center pulling out a little bit too soon. Bob Maggs is now the center. Joe Dooley has come out for a breather. That always happens, it seems like. You put in a new center, no matter how much you work in practice, it's just the rhythm of the two working together. A little bit tempo is a little bit different. Almost intercepted. Jemison, the intended receiver, 
covered by Troy Hill, who had the uh, covered by Melvin Dean, who had the inside coverage on him. Let's take another look. I wouldn't be surprised later on to see Jemison and Ohio State try to run by Dean because he had this smelled out the entire way, sitting right on him. Jemison falls down. Dean makes a good play, but that may be something we'll see a little bit later. Jemison running, trying to get deep on Dean. And it was number 56, Chris Dolman, that got a hand up to partially deflect the ball. Third down and 12, 46 yard line. Tom Zach, four of seven, 62 yards. This is the 10th play of the drive. As time drills it over the middle, it's complete. First down to Cedric Anderson. They'll spot it at state. Little play action on third down. Byers goes through his flare control. Same play that they worked on a little bit earlier. Different receiver. Anderson is really a big play man. If he can get his feet back on the ground, he can do some big damage. Ohio State moving from their own 20 to the pit 37. Roman Bates gets the call and he will pick up five yards to the 32 at second down five. Ray Weatherspoon strong safety with the tackle. Ohio. Earlier earlier you said it would be offensively the stampede of the Buckeyes and they certainly have been doing that against a very tough Panther defense. Well, they tried to run in this series. It got a little tough, and they opened it up with a pass. It's very smart on Ohio State's part. But again, the run setting up the pass, having to look for the run every time. And here it is with Keith Byers. Three yards to the 29. It'll be third down and a couple. Apke coming out with, is that of, coming out with the football? Out, a lot of whistles out there. <laughs> No, it was Chris Dolan that came out with the football. And the whistles were telling Chris to come on, bring the ball back. We're going to play another down, and we're going in the same direction. It's been a long time since these two teams have played a football game. They've been practicing for a long time. You get tired of hitting your own people. When they get out here and hit somebody else, they get excited. And a long time. It has been 30 years since they have played each other. Third down and two, 29-yard line. Another fumble on the exchange. Broadnax was diving for it. And so right now, Tom Zach and his center, Bob Max, are having problems with that exchange. Third time in the ball game that the Buckeyes have fumbled, and they've lost, lost that fumble once it set up a drive. With a look at uh, Tom Zach. He didn't get the ball from the center. I don't know if Dooley is hurt or not, but I'm sure that Earl Bruce would like to get him back in the ball game as soon as possible. Attempt of 46 yards by Rich Spangler. Does not make it. 29 yard line, first down. And Jimmy to throw. It's there. It is complete. Dwight Collins to the 47 yard line. A gain of 18, Pepper Johnson with the tackle. Just zone coverage. Collins starts a little bit late. Roland Tatum, 32, really overruns his coverage. He should have been in, inside, ready to get him when he comes to the inside. He didn't do that. He overran it, opened up a big hole for Dwight Collins. Darrell Clark now in as a wide receiver. First down fifth, their own 47. This is Marlon McIntyre. He and Mark Bailey alternating at fullback as a messenger service. And Henry Brown now in on the defensive line for the Buckeyes. He's a freshman from New York City. He makes the tackle. Here's a quarterback comparison. Both quarterbacks playing very well as far as I can see. Tom Zach not throwing as much. Can Jimmy, as we said early on, has to throw more try and get something done against the, the weakness, really, of the Ohio State secondary. A gain of two on the last play to the 49, second down and eight. And Jimmy, with an audible, throws far side, didn't like the defense that he saw, and he goes to Bill Wallace with the pass completion. It'll be around three or four yards shy of the first down. Garcia Lane with the tackle for the Buckeyes. And Jimmy checking off again, as you said, Charlie, saw the defensive back coming up to the corner of the line of scrimmage, thought he was coming, and he did that for his own protection because he knew that nobody was going to block that defensive back if he came in. 
Check to a short play on the other side. Good completion. Just over six minutes left to go in the first half. Gain of four, third down and four at the Ohio State 47-yard line. McIntyre, the remaining block, back. He's there to block. The roll right, the throw down the sideline. No good. And a flag is dropped on the play. Bill Wallace, the intended receiver. You can tell the wind still whipping around about 16 miles an hour. Offensive pass interference. And here at uh, Sun Devil Stadium, the U shaped it. Well, the, it, the wind can be circular. It can attack you from every direction. We were on the field a little bit earlier, and that was very true. The uh, field goal kickers were having a problem finding out. Tony Recchia with the loss of down penalty is in to kick. He has a 40.8 yard average. And Garcia Lane, one of the outstanding punt returners in the nation, is set for Ohio State at the 20 yard line. Recchia's average ranks him 43rd in the nation as a collegiate kicker. Field it at the 25. Excellent coverage for the special teams. A return of only a yard, maybe two. A kick of 37 yards officially. A two state is the ball. First down, and Joe Dooley, the starting center, is back in the ball game. Play action fake by Tom Jack. And the pass is complete. Jemison. No, it was John Frank. Excuse me, the tight end, and a flag is down. As Frank goes close to the 45-yard line where Melvin Dean makes the tackle. John Frank with 4.6 feet, pre-med, and a 3.9 grade average. Spoke at the luncheon. Excellent speaker, outstanding young man. Face mask against the defense. I was wondering when they were going to get Frank back in the offense on the crossing patterns. And time again, as we see a great look at Frank, is a very intelligent young man, as you see pre-med from Pennsylvania went to school with the, some of the Pittsburgh Panthers against the defense first down adding the penalty to the end of the play carries the ball to the Iowa State 49 yard line first down we see Frank coming across good vision good lane for the quarterback to see goes it to Frank gets up yard four or five speed for a tight end that can block Wildridge the remaining back Rod Knox in motion becomes the lead blocker a gain of a couple Across the midfield stripe, Woolridge the ball carrier to the Pittsburgh 49. Dennis Atiyah with the tackle. It will be second down and eight. And again, Ohio State throwing the ball on first down the last play to set up their run. They would like to run the ball and set up their pass. When it gets too hard to run the ball. When he was out and Max was there. The belly to Brognax taking it in, pulling it back. Brognax the leading blocker for Tom Zack. And Chris Dolman makes the tackle along with Steve Apke. 42-yard line of fit, gain of seven. So it'll be third down and still a yard to go for the first down. Took a good look at the snap. Tom Zach getting the ball very cleanly, running the option. I don't think the Pitt Panthers expected Tom Zach to be running that option as well as he is. But the physical makeup of the center can dictate where the quarterback puts his hands. In close, back outside, and maybe in the heat of battle when you exchange centers, you have a, a mishap as they've had a couple of times. Flag on the play. A gain of four by Byers if it stands up. It's very third down. Ohio State, 15 yards. Pittsburgh penalized more thus far in the ballgame. Third down and six. Tom Zach, far side. Smart play by Ohio State to go back to something that is working. First down. Rodnax tied it in motion. The pitch is to Woolridge. Can't get around the corner. Gain of a couple of yards to the 36. Tom Flynn, free safety, and Troy Hill, the quarterback on that side. Hill, but it is second down and eight. Inside the 30, diving to about the 28-yard line is Roman Bates. Troy Hill, again, the man who tripped him up. Bates the tail back. Getting his block. On Benson, struggling for yardage. Bates, three carries, 11 yards rushing. Wooldridge, four carries, 21. 
Tom Zach has completed seven of ten for 103 yards through the air as the chains come out. It was closer to the 27 yard line. Man, it's a first down. Speed, but they want ball control and they'll beat you to death. Pittsburgh's Just physically. De Pittsburgh's defense knows they have to shut down the run and they have done it at certain times in drives. And when they do, Ohio State immediately goes to the pass and that loosens them up. Again, the belly series. The Broadnax, Tom Zach, the quarterback, pulls it back out, and he goes to the 21-yard line. So he has six. It'll be second down four. And Steve Apke makes the tackle along with Alwyn Grakowski. Junior quarterback Mike Tom Zach played at Thornton Fractional High School in Calumet City, Illinois, under his father, Ron, who was his coach, and he set school records for running and passing touchdowns. And he is a good passer. He's rated number 12 in the nation. Roman Bates to the 20 yard line. Third down coming up. And about two and a half yards for the first down. Troy Benson with the tackle, along with Bill Moss. I think if you're Pittsburgh's defense here, you've got to think Keith Byers and John Frank. Frank on a little delay going across, or, or Byers up the middle on the run. The ball just outside the pit 20 yard line. Domzak fires, it is caught. A sliding reception, the pass a little behind Dad Jemison. Two yard line, gain of 18, first down, goal to go. It's a good read by Tomzak. Frank was coming across, he had three linebackers on him. Good read, nobody, no linebackers in between he and Jemison. Fires the ball in there, it's first and goal on the two. The Buckeyes have scored more than twice as many times running as throwing this year, 33 to 15. Rodnax and Byers in the backfield. Rodnax, now that is 252 pounds of a senior fullback struggling in the arms of Ray Weatherspoon. <laughs> Tackle by Ray Weatherspoon. Here's a good look at it. Give it to my biggest man in the backfield. Good job by Weatherspoon number nine, Benson, 54. Clogging it up, just waiting for some help. He said, come on, Blue Jerseys, give me some help. He was giving away about <laughs> 60 pounds on the struggle. The pit defense allowing only 14 touchdowns all season long. Ken Blair. Outside, defense, first down. Ken Blair coming into the offensive set. Offsides against the defense, half the distance to the goal, and the down goes over. The Panther and Brutus Buckeye. Look for Ken Blair in motion, though. Tom Zach just trying to edge it in from a yard out. He has scored the Buckeyes' touchdown earlier. That was when he capped a 64-yard drive and eight plays scoring from three yards out. And there it is, about four inches away. A certain way for your quarterback to get a headache is right here. Dive him over the top, get all the linebackers and defensive backs come in with their forearms. That'll get you a headache real quick. Tom Zach, eight carries, 11 yards rushing and a touchdown. And the score, Keith by 14, 14 to 7. Rich Spangler kicking off for Ohio State. Taken at the back edge of the end zone by Tom Brown. Down at that point, he's had offensive possession. Now, 51 seconds left to go in the first half. To Jimmy from his own 20 yard line. Mark Bailey. Hit at the 25, his momentum carries him to the 27-yard line. Second down and three, and the clock moving. Tackle by number Going without the huddle. Johnson and number 97, Dave. 
Far side pass is complete and out of bounds. That is the tight end, Clint Wilson, stopping the clock now with 18 seconds. We talked about time of possession, total offensive plays, Ohio State 41, Pittsburgh 29, that's 12 more plays. Ohio State really dominating in the second quarter on the two long drives, and I think when you run the football, those are the type of things you can do. Control the football, keep it away from Kajemi and the passing of the Pittsburgh Panthers. Gain of five to the 32, first down, Foge Fagio. Panthers head coach, 14 to seven, Ohio State leading. To Jimmy going deep, overthrowing, should have been intercepted. Garcia Lane was the perfect receiver and he just dropped it. That was too easy for him. <laughs> Didn't handle this one. Can Jimmy just over overreacts to this ball. He throws the ball straight down the field thinking Wallace was going to go straight up. Wallace breaks to the inside. There are 17, 131 yards. Touchdown, second and 10. This one is complete. McCall. Four seconds, three seconds. Clock is stopped. 18 yards on the play. Pepper Johnson and Clark Backus were there for the Buckeye defense. The ball just across the 50. Pitt with a timeout. With three seconds left to go in the first half. Anytime you can get the ball in the hands of McCall, he can make something happen. It was a good play. Now, there's 234 points to 61 points in the second and third quarter combined. And Pittsburgh has averaged 200, has scored a total of 265 points all season. All that those numbers mean is that we're ready for the kickoff. And also that Pittsburgh has got to stop Ohio State and then get their offense on the board and score some score some points. They cannot score points when their offense is not on the field. But the Panthers will start receiving the kickoff. Tom Brown, Chuck Scales, and Mark Bailey will be the three men set for the return. As Rich Spangler will start the second half. Buckeyes lead it 14 to 7 here in the Fiesta Bowl. Field, fielded by Mark Bailey, 10-yard line. Straight up the middle on the return. There was a fumble. Had the play been blown down. Ohio State has the ball. Scott Leach, number eight, recovered the fumble. Not your ideal way to start off the second half. It just takes away the momentum. Foge Fazio had pumped up the Panthers to come out and take the opening kickoff. There you see the ball coming loose right there. Nobody knows about it except a few Ohio State players, and they get on it very quickly. Not the way to start for the Panthers. But an excellent way to start for the Buckeyes. Lanise is the man who jarred the ball loose. And here comes Broadnax, 250 pounds and all. Tom Flynn with the tackle. 17 yard line. And when Big Brognax, number 38, carries the football, you want to hit him low. You don't want to get him up high. Great blocking by the offensive line. And a penalty flag against Ohio State. The line of scrimmage was the 31 yard line. The play went to the 17. But now the penalty will place the ball back at the 32. Illegal use of the hands, offense, Illegal first use down. Of the, hands. the down goes over. It will be first down and 11. Ball, Penalty down. assessed from the spot of the foul. First and 11. First and 11. At the pit, 32-yard line. So the Buckeyes here with an opportunity to give themselves some breathing room. On an option, just inside the 30, Tom Zach, the ball carrier, and Bill Moss, Makes the tackle. Mark at the 29 yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and eight. So now the Pitt defense expecting a, an offensive drive, receiving the kickoff, but then with the fumble, they uh, they have to kind of get together. They have to rise up. This is what Pitt, the strength of the Pittsburgh team is their defense. They had to carry the offense earlier in the year. They had a down period and now they've come back to play very well and as we've said they only allow 12 points a game on the average throughout the season second down a little play action fake 
incomplete. A little short of Keith Byers, the intended receiver, will be third down in it. Puff fake. Deep pattern. In zone, overthrown, incomplete. It will be fourth down and eight at the 29-yard line. We might address ourselves here to one fact in that the uh, field goal kickers are not that strong on either ball club. Well, Schubert of Pittsburgh has been injured. Here's Jemison releasing from the right side, going down the middle of the field. Now, Tom Zach was looking to Frank to his left, trying to get the other safety out of the way. Flynn was out of there, but Weatherspoon, number nine, had good coverage on Jemison. Rich Spangler for the Buckeyes, his longest field goal successful kick, 36 yards. Stuffy Everett's longest successful for the Panthers is 45, but he is only two of four. So that's the reason you're not seeing field goal kickers in this situation. Tom Jack rolls, throws, it is high, it is incomplete. On fourth down and eight, John Frank, the man that we talked about a moment ago, the intended receiver, but the Panther defense holds. So they take over. We'll see Pittsburgh on offense in just a moment. Crucial series of downs for the Pittsburgh defense. 30-yard line first down. And Jimmy, the quarterback. Here's Joe McCall. McCall across the 40. McCall to the 44-yard line. Gain of 14. First down. Kelvin Bell with the tackle. The 1984 Fiesta Bowl is being brought to you by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By RCA, maker of innovative video products that will open your eyes. By Toyota, who remind you to buckle up your children for safety. It's a good feeling, Toyota. And by Electric Shave. Electric Shave does for an electric razor what leather does for a blade. First down pit. Their own 44-yard line. Here is McCall. Four yards to the 48. It will be second down and six. One thing differently the Panthers have done here in the second half is come out with two tight ends, pitch the ball to McCall and get him wide, let him find a seam, a little hole in the defense, and get upfield. So far, it's worked on the first two plays of the second half. McCall averaging 4.9 yards a carry this season, almost nine yards a reception. Second down. Mark Bailey, a yard to the 49, it'll be blind. Wilson and Johnson have been the double tight end set, and you'll see Wallace, we've been seeing Wallace as a wide receiver. Stinnett also coming in and out, along with Dwight Collins. At fullback, McIntyre and Bailey, McCall the tailback, and Jimmy the quarterback. Third down five, you look for the pass. And a quarterback draw. Will come up a couple of yards shy of the first down. A gain of three. It'll be fourth down and two. Spencer Nelms, number 54, the middle guard, was not fooled. Nelms was not fooled. Plus, he's going against a very good center in Jim Sweeney. Sweeney is probably one of the finest centers in the uh, country as in college football is concerned. He gets overshadowed by the fact that Bill Fralick is on the same offensive line. Tony Recchia will be kicking, and Garcia Lane is set for the return. His first punt, 40, uh, 37 yards. He goes for the sideline, and he gets it. Let's see where they mark it out. They're going to mark it out. Ball is kicked out of bounds. At the 22-yard line. So Ohio State will take over on their own 22, leading in the ball game 14 to 7 with just Good for 26 yards to the 22-yard line. 22-27! The snap, I think, came out before everybody was ready. <laughs> Top sack scrambles for three yards to the 25. It will be second down and seven. We've, we've been talking about Thad Jemison, number 88. He is having an excellent game. Five receptions for 81 yards. Let's check the Fiesta Bowl record book. Well, it shows this is going after right now. And John Jefferson went on to do pretty well, too, didn't he? San Diego and Green Bay, yes, sir. A lot of big names, big players have been in the Fiesta Bowl in the 13 outings of this game. Too much time. 25-second violation, a delay of game. 
kind of is a letdown. So now they got to get their concentration level back up. Pass is complete. It is Thad Jimison. Jimison now with six receptions, only two away from tying the record book. Ray Weatherspoon makes the tackle. Jemison on a crossing pattern. Frank takes the coverage deep. Jemison is the beneficiary of the double coverage on John Frank. Jemison only caught. Down and three. 29 yard line. Ohio State in their own territory. Time sack to throw. The tight end, John Frank to the 40 with a stiff arm leads to the 47 yard line gain of 18 tom, tom flynn with the tackle by number five tom flynn first down first down ohio state this is vintage ohio state football fake to your favorite running back pull the linebackers up hit your tight end john frank going across the middle this time he's open they're covering the wide receivers downfield so Tom Zach very alertly sees the coverage, gives it to Frank, and he gets downfield and gets some yardage. An excellent receiver with very good speed. Tom Zach has completed 11 of 16, 157 yards. And this time he gives to John Woldridge, the tailback. Number 25, John Woldridge. Woolridge with a couple of yards on the play to the 49. It will be second down and eight. Bill Moss with the tackle just outside the 48 yard line. The officials spot the ball. Ball on the 48 yard line. Believe how young these quarterbacks look. You look into their helmets and I don't even think they're shaving yet. <laughs> they may be young, but they're very tough and talented. I'm impressed with them. I, uh, they are very well prepared, very well coached coming into this ball game. Play action by Tom Zach. He goes deep, and it's incomplete. Jemison, the intended receiver, he's trying to run off Melvin Dean, cut back towards the quarterback, but there was good defensive coverage by Dean. And that's the that's the combination, as you see, Dean 28, and Jemison. Jemison gets right up on top of him. Dean coverage all the way. Got to run down, make a little break to the outside with. Jemison and then go upfield a little curl and go because Dean is taking every fake that Jemison has given him. Third down. Having lots of time. Now the pressure throwing this one away. That was over Anderson's head, but he had the time. Good defensive coverage. Then when he the kick, his first kick covered 37 yards. This is his second of the ball game. And Tom Flynn is set for the return. 35th of the nation in punt returns. And he will field it at the 10 yard line. Just a couple of yards on the return. Excellent coverage, a 41 yard kick. Two yards on the return. Orlando Lowry was there for the ball game. Pittsburgh from their own 13 yard line. First down, trailing by seven in the ball game. Today, Kajimi has moved to the number six spot up at single season passing yardage. 1,720 yards after the first half. But here he goes to Joe McCall. McCall has four to the 17, so it will be second down and six as Roland Tatum makes the tackle. Offensively for Pitt, they have to throw the ball. It's just a feeling. Am, am I making the correct statement? Well, I, I think so, Charlie, but I think what they're doing now is trying to establish a run to take the pressure off of their wide receivers. I think Ohio State is expecting them to throw and is dropping more people in the secondary than Pittsburgh would like. Here's McCall. Hit at the 20 by Orlando Lowry. And then to the 22, Tatum was also there. So mark it for five. It'll be third down and just about a yard to go for the first down. Take a look at 51, McNally, who is in there for Sweeney, blocking on Nelms. Does a good job as long as you can make Nelms go around you if the play is going away from that direction. If it's going to the right, you can make him go around you to the left. You're doing your job. Here we see McCall just getting some tough yardage, running over Lowry, number 37. Dave Morrill, the third down and one. McCall, and he may not have picked it up. Roland Tatum was there to greet him. McCall, 120 yards total offense, 62 yards receiving, 58 yards rushing prior to this game. I mean, prior to that carry. And McCall 
500 yards in the last three games of the season rushing. Roland Tatum, 32, is the man that makes things happen for the defense for the Buckeyes. Got there in time, read it all the way, and stopped the Panthers from making a first down. So that means that Tony Recchia will be kicking. Tony number 42, Tony Recchia. And Garcia Lane is set for the return. So this time it was the Buckeye defense that held. Good kick. Lane taking it back at the 25-yard line to the 30. Returns near the 39-yard line. We've got a timeout. Ohio State has the lead and the football. 14 to 7 with 640. It was 51 yards. Well, let's check the Fiesta Bowl record book. The longest kick in the Fiesta Bowl two years ago, 1982. Fifth down. Vaughn Broadnax, from Sydney, Ohio, 6'2", 252-pound senior. Number 38, Vaughn Bill Moss Broadnax makes the tackle. 71. Let's revisit Bill with Moss. our freshman Apke blocking uh, on 73. Karowitz, Karowitz getting the best of him. Ball down on the 45-yard line. I don't think Apke was too happy about that, Charlie. What do you think? Well, it was a wrestling matchup <laughs> in Broadnax. A little, a little over. It was like a uh, heavyweight against a lightweight. That's right, but Broadnax, Ohio, heavyweight wrestling champion, but you're right. A little difference in the way. Broadnax again. On Broadnax. This time it is Troy Benson who takes him on. Benson has a few more pounds. He weighs in at 225. Steve Epke. Boy, Broadnax, that's a load and a half, isn't it? Um, he's carrying the football and you're a defensive back the place you want to get him is around the ankles or grab onto the shoulder pads and wait for help spotted at the 48 is third down and one that's what three bricks shy of a full load right there there you go third down and one Spinning through is Keith Fire. <laughs> and <laughs> he is pulled back. Apke doesn't weigh enough to hold him back. <laughs> Apke, the freshman, weighing in at 185 pounds. Again, if you joined us late, his first start, replacing Al Desert, who's out with a knee injury. And the kid has looked good. He has. He went to Cincinnati more. And he played on the same team with a lot of top uh, recruits that went to a lot of schools. And Foge Fazio was saying, he really wasn't that highly thought of coming out, but he liked the way he moved, and they thought they could put some weight on him. He says, he hadn't put much weight on yet. Gain of four, first down. At the pit, 48-yard line. Play action, Tom Zach to throw. Steps away from pressure. Down the middle, it is intercepted. Tom Flynn with the interception to the 40, to the 45, to the 50. To the Ohio State 44 yard line, and the Panthers have something to celebrate about. This was only the second poor pass by Tom Zach all day. He goes to Frank, he's got Anderson open on the other side of the field. You can see Anderson at the top of your screen. Now, Tommy Flynn gets the ball. He was a quarterback in high school, also returned punts. He looks like he's doing his forte right here. Good return, sets up the offense for the Pittsburgh Panthers. At the Ohio State 44-yard line on their other score, Apke set it up with a fumble recovery. Pass complete to McCall. The defense reacts, 41-yard line, gain of three, second down and seven. With Pitt scored in the first half, Apke recovered the fumble. He went 57 yards in six plays. Turnovers are even at 2-2. Hey, hey, hey. Tom Flynn of Verona, Pennsylvania, the senior. 40 yards on the return. Everybody has a son. <laughs> They're all saying, Mom, I'll be home in next I'll be home tomorrow. That's the way it should be at the Fiesta Bowl number 13. Little play action fake all alone is Bill Wallace. Inside the 30, 29 yard line, 12 on the play, first down. Garcia Lane with the tackle. Lane with an interception to his credit in the ballgame. We'll see the linebacker Blitzen 
Wallace sees it, so does the quarterback, and Jimmy gets him the ball very quickly. Eric Lane then has to come over and make the tackle. Good read by Wallace and the quarterback on the blitz. Wallace, the hot receiver on that play? Exactly. You have to see it. It's an onside adjustment. The receiver and the quarterback must see it. in the end zone. Kelvin Bell. Ohio State will have the ball at the 20 yard line. Number four, Kelvin Bell of Richmond, Virginia. Four interceptions during the regular season. Accolades for the Buckeyes, disappointment for the Panthers. And Jimmy over on the sideline immediately picks up the phones, talking to the coach upstairs, saying, what's wrong? You work on him. That time he shouldn't have thrown the ball. First, someone gets an idea. Then someone else may look at it differently. Even Anna thought it. The ball first down on their own 20-yard line. The second back through is Keith Byers. And a flag is down on the play, so while we short out the flag, Dennis Atiyah with the tackle. Let's go back to the interception just a moment ago. We'll take a look at Wallace. Bell, number four, is not fooled. You know, Charlie, this ball should not have been thrown. You work all week in practice, and you say, this is going to be open, and this game to the coach upstairs. Thumbs up, handing out to Byers. Keith Byers from the 10 to the 13, gain of three, second down and Keith 17. Fires. Will the Buckeyes be throwing this deep in their own territory? Atia with the uh, last the tackle. tackle number 40, I think if they Atia are throwing, they'd throw to somebody that is sure-handed like Lekowski. Frank, and they would get their quarterback outside the pocket where it is not hard to see. At the time you can't see, but if you can get outside the pocket, you don't have to read anything. It's just who's open and let me throw it to him. Second down, 17. 157 yards and in interception. He's rushed for 17 yards. And here is Keith Byers with Dennis Atia making the tackle. 17 yard line, gain of four, third down 13. Jim Corsados, pure passer. It's a little cool because of the wind. It's been swirling around at 16 miles an hour. Bowers, 53 yards rushing and a touchdown. Here's Tom Zach to throw. He fires tipped incomplete. Diving for the interception, no. Close, but no football. Anderson tipped it, and Troy Benson was scrambling after the interception. Troy, and he almost got there. Troy was trying to convince <laughs> the official that he caught it. The official was right there, had a good the view of it. Take a look at the play action fake. He's got to throw it over Dolman. Dolman actually tips the ball. That's what you call throwing into coverage. I don't know. He couldn't really see. We were blocked by Dolman on the play to see whether or not he caught it. Here's the punt by Edwards. And Flynn feels it on the 45, steps out of bounds, about the 48-yard line. And now the Panthers from their own 48-yard line. The pass is complete to Dwight Collins. Doug Hill makes the tackle. They'll spot the ball at the Ohio State 46-yard line. A gain of six on the play, second down and four. He's talking with, as we look at Troy Benson, Troy was the one that almost had the interception. He's talking it over there and trying to convince the referee. You know, these officials are, aren't too easily swayed anymore. They, they are always in the right position at the right time and usually make the right calls. Second and four. Incomplete, a flag down on the play. 78 max, 578 max. Is that an audible or a sincere audible? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times you'll check off by repeating the snap count. And usually their snap count is either one, two, or three. So when he goes up to five, it's probably not a check off. But if it is, if he, sometimes he wants to fake him out. Legal procedure against they have the call. The call, I'm sure, on Bill Freilich. He's talking with the All-America tackle, pulling back just the a little. Panthers about Kenjimi. 
Says he is a very intelligent young man. He says he doesn't have the strongest arm. He's got a good strong arm, but not as not a cannon. But yet he's very intelligent, very smart. Always does the right thing and gets it done. I'm very impressed with him today. He's completed 15 of 23, 172 yards, one touchdown, but two interceptions. Bit at their own 49-yard line, second down and nine. Did you notice the defensive <laughs> lineman? Knocked away. Good defensive play by Roland Tatum. But I have a feeling it's just what we were talking. Is that an audible? Was he checking off? What is he doing? Well, get up, show the blitz, and then drop off where his hot receiver is. Tatum, who made the play for the defense, only one of two Ohio State players from west of Illinois. He's from Inglewood, California. That is West. Here is McIntyre. McIntyre hit at the 42. A flag dropped back at the 48-yard line. Garcia Lane for the Buckeyes. On the tackle number 12, Garcia Lane. The officials today are out of the WAC conference. Gene Wirtz, Gene Agnes, Tom Robinson, Rocky Arroyo, Bob Mantooth, Doug Reeves. And we were talking to them yesterday about maybe going to an extra official in the college ranks and in some of the conference has. And Gene Wirtz said in the WAC conference, it will be a clip against the offense. That, uh, so the ball goes back to the 36-yard line, and the down goes over. Six-yard line. It's there. He's got it. First down. 39-yard line of Ohio State. They may mark it at the 40. 24 yards on the play. And it was Jeff Casper, number 88, from Washington, Pennsylvania, who caught it. This is just a great throw by Kajemi. He gets deep, steps up in the pocket, reads the coverage, and fires the ball right to the man. Here, we'll take a look at it. Good catch, good concentration. Casper has not been in the ball game very much today. He's got to be cold coming in there. He's back on the sideline. You notice he wears the shatterproof goggles during the regular season for reception. So his fifth of the year and a big one for the Panthers. Little play action fake pass is there. Knocked out of bounds. Is it complete? Yes. At the 26 yard line, gain of 14. This one to Bill Wallace. Sean Gale for the defense. So the offense of Pittsburgh is underway. It is moving and it's moving John through Gale. the air as we said early on. The way to get through, get Number to 25. the Ohio State team is through the air. This is where they've had their problems all day. Excellent throw, one foot in bounds, good catch. And you said it would be the Pitt defense that would have to hold off the offense, then the throwing of Kinjimi. Circle the wagons and let Kinjimi fire the arrow. Mark Bailey from the 26 to the 24, a gain of two. Second down and eight. Dave Morrow, you remember out of the ball game earlier in this period with an injury. He's back. As we said earlier, overlooked by a lot of the uh, All-American teams this year, only because of the fact that Bill Fralick was uh, so dominant at left tackle. We said can Jimmy would be firing the arrows. Well, he has 210 yards passing, and here he gets out. That will come off his rushing yardage. Spencer Nelms is the man who dropped him. And with that play, the third quarter will come to a close. So we still... It's in there. Pettijohn comes off on him and leaves him free. Make the sack. That's the way you stop the quarterback from throwing the football. Third down and 15. 31-yard line. It is caught. And again, it is Jeff Casper, his second reception of the ball game. And it's another big one. Third down and 15, the pass to the 13-yard line. This is an excellent throw. Look at it from the end zone. And Jimmy is throwing this ball before he makes his break, throws it to the outside away from number four, Bell, throws it away from him. Caster makes a good catch. Big first down for Pittsburgh. Casper, two receptions for 43 yards, both on key downs, long yardage. Here's McCall, fumbles into the end zone. It will be a touchdown recovered by Pittsburgh. I think Wilson got it. 
Number 84, Clint Wilson scoring his second touchdown of the ball game. You talk about being at the right place at the right time. I don't I don't think the first pass, the touchdown pass was intended for him. Certainly this one wasn't supposed to be a touchdown for Wilson being at the right place at the right time. All of life is timing. <laughs> Snuffy Everett will go for the tie. He splits it and he has it. And we are tied at 14. Joe McCall, 71 yards rushing, 16 carries, but the key here is Clint Wilson with the fumble recovery in the end zone, his second touchdown of the ball game. We'll be back with a kickoff. And at 14-14, Keith Byers, number 41, John Wildridge, number 25, are set to return the kickoff of this man, number two, Pat Viancourt, freshman, Farm, Ohio. He was a walk-on, left-footed kicker. And the wind that we've talked about, 16 miles an hour, swirling here at Sun Devil Stadium. Set All that, game sold out, more than 70,000. Set sets that ball on the tee a little crooked, doesn't yes, he? he does. <laughs> well, he's a sidewinder, he's left-footed, so you have to expect that. <laughs> two-yard line. He's to the 10, 15, 20, breaks it. He's to the 30. He's to the 40. He's gone. To the 30, the 20, the 10. Don't go out of bounds till you get him in. 14, nine yards. He just barely gets up inside the wedge as you see the Panthers coming around. From here on, it's a foot race, and now he's worrying about what am I going to do when I get in the end zone? Am I going to dance? Am I going to jump? Who am I going to high-five with? He almost <laughs> steps out of bounds. He starts, oh, boy, the excitement of college football. The extra point is good. There's an old adage of the West, don't count your chips until you finish the game. <laughs> and here it is. Leading the stampede. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. That is the lead horse of the stampede. <laughs> Keep firing. Took him 14 seconds to cover 99 yards. Bailey, Scales, and Brown for the Panthers. And the wind blowing the ball off of the tee. Spangler to kick off for the Buckeyes is a team 70 place in the record book. <laughs> but he'll remember it for a long time. Oh, yes. And so will we. Here's Tom Brown. Brown to the 20, 25, 28 yard line. The 1984 Fiesta Bowl being brought to you by the all new front wheel. Pass is dropped off to McCall. Coming out of the backfield across the 35 to the 36, maybe the 37 yard line. It'll be second down, about a yard and a half to go. For the first down, Clark Backus with the tackle. 13 minutes, 55 seconds, time remaining in the ball game. The magic number has been seven for Ohio State. They were out in front, seven nothing, seven seven a tie. Buckeyes led by seven again. 14-7, then tied at 14-14, and 14 seconds later, it was seven again for the Buckeyes. They lead it 21-14. Bill Wallace, did he pull it down? He has possession, yes. Good pass by Kajimi. Putting it in a perfect position for Wallace to bring it in. 17 yards. An excellent throw, Kajimi fakes. The defensive corner has rotated up. Oh, Wallace gets around him. An excellent throw and catch. Fantastic. Keeps his feet inbounds. Kajemi and Wallace have done this all year and they're doing it here again today. Six receptions for 70 yards. Jimison for the Buckeyes. Six receptions for 89. They're kind of floating at the record. Set by John Jefferson that we showed you later in our Fiesta Bowl record book. Joe McCall stopped by Byron Lee. No, we looked, I'm, I'm sorry, not that we showed you later, that we looked at earlier. We saw John Jefferson in action with his eighth reception. He set that record 1975, nine years ago. So let me correct that. Gain of three to the 47, second down and seven. 
than Jimmy fires. This one is complete to Collins. Collins to the 35-yard line. Gain of nine. First down for the Panthers. Again. He's doing it with short passes. He's reading deep. Nothing's there deep, so he comes back off the short. Little slant pattern by Collins. He was the outlet receiver. Lowers his head, gets what he can. They're on the 35-yard line, Charlie. They're moving. And Collins just became Pitt's all-time receiver in yardage, passing Gordon Jones. Here's McCall. From the 35 to the 32, gain of three. Second down seven, Byron Lee making the tackle. So can Jimmy, 25th in the nation in passing, is mixing it up. He's through the air. He's on the ground. Looking now for the plays in from the sideline, but as we have seen throughout the afternoon, he does have the ability to do to audibleize at the line of scrimmage. He certainly does. The plays are coming down from the press box from the quarterback coach Ron Turner. Turner is calling an excellent game, passing on first down, running when the uh, uh, situation calls for. It. Far side pass is complete. It is Collins again. So that is the hot hand. And Jimmy to Collins laying with the. But I think when you get that old adrenaline running, this is last game, psychology major, really playing well today. Five receptions, 52 yards. Third down, a little over a yard to go. Here's McCaw. First down. Pepper Johnson with the tackle, number 98. You wonder where nicknames come? Well, I'll tell you where Pepper Johnson for Ohio State got his. As we look at this again, he saw his dad putting pepper on his food, so he tried it when he was a kid. Unfortunately, he was putting it on his cornflakes. <laughs> and he's had the name ever since. <laughs> Joe McCall, 82 yards in 19 carries. 23-yard line, gain of four on the last play, first down. McCall, total offense, 155 yards, rushing receiver. Inside, he's there. Wallace, out of bounds. Bad pass. He was open. Poor timing, Charlie. He was open, and he was open for a long time. Can Jimmy needed to get the ball to him a little bit quicker? I don't know if anybody knocked Can Jimmy down or he just fell over on his back. He certainly is disgusted. He read the coverage. He knew he had him one on one. And he didn't get the ball there quick enough. And you want the receiver as you look again with that see stop how, watching. See, he's open there. He's open by a mile. Good call by the official. The official one foot is was right there, but you've yeah. got to have that clock in your head. You've got to know when to break, when the quarterback is looking for you. You want to make the break the same time that he wants to throw. On the draw, here's the call. Ten-yard line, first down. Gain of 13. That was the ninth play of the drive. Started back at the 28. 10 minutes, 43 seconds left to go in the ball game. Panthers on the move, down by seven points. An e excellent call here because they were throwing the ball very well. Ohio State's nose, they're getting hurt as we'll take it. There's a sneaker. Somebody <laughs> threw a sneaker at him. Try to trip him up with a sneaker. <laughs> and a shoe goes flying, but pass was still incomplete. Go ahead. Here's McCall. Good defensive play. They lose half a yard. I'm just going to say the draw was an excellent call because Ohio State was being hurt with the pass. Pittsburgh came back with the draw. John Gale made the defensive play for Ohio State. Second and goal from the 11. Second down, goal to go. Loss of a yard to the 11-yard line. Kelvin Bell checks into the defense. McCall, 21 carries, 94 yards rushing. The Jimmy throws, touchdown. Collins. Dwight Collins. Needing one touchdown catch, and he's got it to become Pitt's all-time leader in that category. Dwight Collins. Pittsburgh is going to go for two here, I believe. They're going to take a timeout. And Jimmy was referring with Faze. Coach Faze on the sideline. It looks as though they're going to go for two and go for the win here at this point. You can, If you miss it, you can always come back and kick a field goal at a later date. Good, good call, good play, scoring the touchdown. Can Jimmy to Collins. We've got a timeout. We'll be back with a two-point attempt in just a moment. 
It's for you. It's Harrington. We all can see it coming. I've read your proposal, and they sound like a good outfit. Let's do it. And now that time's what? at hand. We got it. But you don't know anything about computers. This is all I have to know. Parked on Fifth Street must be moved or it will be. Two-point attempt. Go for the win. Right now, go for the lead. I think it's a good call at this point, because if you go for it, you're ahead by one point. If you make it, if you don't make it, then you can always come back and kick the field goal. From three yards out. Every offense now has a set number of plays to try for two points. Pittsburgh went to one of them. Let's see what it is. Play action. Tipped and complete. The point after and if I read it right, Daryl Clark was open, but he did not go to Daryl Clark. Maybe we can look at that again. No, first let's go to the touchdown. Go to the touchdown first. And Jimmy looks to his left the entire way. Excellent throw between the linebackers. Collins getting open for the score. We'll be back with a look at the two-point attempt that failed. Yo with the gamble, and he did not pull it off. 72-yard drive in 11 plays. Took more than four and a half minutes. So Ohio State now leads by one, 21 to 20. Bayern Court will be kicking off to either Keith Byers or John Wildred. You can see the, the paper blowing around, the wind here today, and you can hear it. This is a kind of a squib-type kick to break up any return possibilities because Keith Byer went 99 yards for a score not too long ago. Let's go now to the two-point play. The middle of your screen, number 84, Wilson, Gets his release, a play action fake. They wanted to hold the linebackers and dump the ball over. It's a difficult pass in a short area. You saw Hill, 27, get up, knock it away. Back a 17, make sure. That's a very difficult play. State, Keith Tinsley on the coverage team for Pittsburgh. The Buckeyes underway in their own territory. Leading 21 to 20. Pittsburgh's ball record is seven and eight. So the winner will have the top. John Woldridge from the 37 to the 40 yard line, a gain of three. From the other side of the line of scrimmage, Pittsburgh has got to slant their defensive linemen, try and mess up the blocking assignments for the offense, and get in there and stop them. And if it comes down to a kicking game, well, there's really not, a, not an advantage here because neither team has a, an outstanding kicker. Here's Byers. But as long as Ohio State has this man, Keith Byers, who has scored two touchdowns, including a 99-yard kickoff return, Right now, they are in the saddle. Chris Dolman with a tackle. Ground level, let's take a look. Watch Tom Zach fake it, get rid of the ball very quickly as Wojciechowski comes in there, pips the ball out there. It takes more than one man to stop Keith Byers. A gain of 13 to the pit 47-yard line, 8.55 and counting. Time remaining in the game. It was Ohio Wingla. State by one. Excuse me, Charlie, that was Wingla-Kowski, not Wojciechowski. Oh, all right. Your wing and your wool mixed up is all. Here's Roman Bates. Bates to the 44 yard line, gain of three, second down and seven, and the freshman Steve Apke makes a tackle along with Tom Flynn. Howard, and Ray Weatherspoon. Howard Schnellenberger, the head coach of the University of Miami, who we'll be watching tonight, going against uh, Tom Osborne's Nebraska Cornhuskers, has a long name club, and he's putting, having new members all the time, and and uh, Wing Lukowski, I'm going to tell, I will tell Howard Bent when I get back to Miami <laughs> that Wing Lukowski is certainly one that he may consider for membership. I don't guess Jones would make it. Would it? <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> Play action fake pass is incomplete. Frank, the intended receiver. Apke had the coverage, third down and seven, 44 yard line, stopping the clock, eight minutes and four seconds left to go in Fiesta Bowl 13. Then, of course, it's on to the Rose Bowl. The granddaddy of them all, Merlin Olsen, Dick Enberg are all set to go there. And has had problems going across country and trying to beat the Pac-10 in the Rose Bowl. It should be an interesting game. But Illinois, they put the ball in the air. They're an exciting ball club to watch. So they, they do put the ball in the air, and I think the Big Ten Conference is changing in that direction. You have, you have a lot of passing teams. As we look at Byers on his fake, sneaking through the line, only need five yards for the completion. Take a look at six. Wingolkowski, 13 sacks on the year. Gets there a little bit late. So it is fourth down, and Carl Edwards will be kicking 
to Tom Flynn. Eight minutes exactly left to go in the Fiesta Bowl. High snap. Left-footed kicker. Kind of floats like a knuckleball. But fielded at the 11-yard line by Tom Flynn. So the Panthers now at their own 11. 89 yards away from the end zone, trailing by one. Seven. Southern Cal missed a two-point conversion in Purdue 1-14-13. The Jimmy's pass is complete to McCall. They spotted the ball at the 12-yard line. First down. The play goes to the 90. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Doug Hill, the rover back. But Tom Zach has the lead. Here's McCall. We said early on in the telecast is do it all McCall. He has 80 yards receiving. Orlando, Orlando Lowry with the tackle. No game. It is no game. Still on the 19-yard line, third down and three. McCall on the season rushing for 846 yards, 4.9-yard average. Two tight ends for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Can Jimmy rolling? He can keep. Heads for the sideline, dives right at the marker. Let's see where they spot it. The I'll football the hit 15. on the sideline at the 22-yard line. Now, that is three yards from the line of scrimmage. It was third down and three. That's the good news. The bad news is the chains are on the other side of the field, so we may have a measurement. Take a look if we can see. First down. Can Jimmy, you can really see him diving for that yep. red flag laying on the ground. We'll take another look at it. All his receivers were covered. The option is to go ahead and run it. There's the marker, and he goes for it. I don't know if he went out of bounds when he got to it. <laughs> what a player. First down, 22-yard line. Double fake, play action, roll right, pass is complete to McIntyre. Marlon McIntyre. Marlon McIntyre. And Pepper Johnson makes the tackle. They'll mark the ball just across the 30-yard line. Let's call it 31, gain of nine, second down and one. Pick up a nine on that net, second and one. Time remaining, just over six and a half minutes and counting. Second down and one. McCall, and he has the first down as his momentum carries him to the 35, a gain of four, first down for Pitt. Now, should it come down to a field goal, victory. Yes, to ball record book that we have been showing you throughout the day. Here's pressure out of the backfield is McIntyre and it's incomplete. Pass intended for number three, Marlon McIntyre incomplete. It will be second down and 10, 35 yard line. 5.59 left to go in Fiesta Bowl 13. Ohio State 21 and Pitt 20. Three touchdowns apiece. The Panthers went for two on their last score. They did not make it. And Jimmy has completed 26 of 37. He's thrown for 295 yards. And by the way, that is a new Fiesta Bowl <laughs> record. A new record. Way to go, John. Hey, hey. He's busy right now, John. Yes. The draw to McCall from the 35 to the 41, a gain of six. Third down and four, Roland Tatum with the tackle. Big play coming up here, third and four. You need to keep possession. You've got five minutes and 40 seconds to go. If they don't make it on this third down, they may go for it on fourth as we see Roland Tatum. And Joe McCall rushing for more than 100 yards in the game. 24 carries, 104 yards. Jimmy has pressure, fires, it's complete, McCall out of bounds. I don't think he made the first down, Charlie. I think he thought he had it, 
And then I, he just backed out of bounds. I think he may be a yard short. I think you're right. I think he went out at the 44, needed to cross the 45. The official's getting a lot of help from Kanjemi <laughs> and McCall. <laughs> Fojo over well, there on the other side. He could help you too. That's right. <laughs> Little quick out. You're right. And he had room to back a little further. I don't think he realized that he was that close. Official timeout for measurement. Official timeout. George Perlis is now at Michigan State. He'll rebuild that program. Hayden Fry at <laughs> Iowa. Did not pick up the first down, but he does have. And there was room, Bob, just like you said. I he don't just, think he realized where he was. I really think he thought he was past the marker, and all he had to do was just get out of bounds with it. He needed to stop and hit upfield. Fourth and one, big play in the ball game. Two tight ends, they go for it. Of course you go for it here. Quarterback State to Jimmy. He's got it. Needed four, five, six, seven, eight inches, somewhere in that. I'm giving myself a little leeway. Yeah, nothing to it. You give it to your power <laughs> runner, just let him go right like across there. Those runner. quarterbacks can get it anytime. <laughs> no, those quarterbacks stick together. That's what they do. Gate of a couple on the first down. So the Panthers retain possession, 5-13 on the clock. Time remaining, Pittsburgh down by one, 21 to 20. That's something else you might want to point. Obviously, the Panthers want to score, but you don't want to score too soon. Well, that's very true. You don't want to score too soon. You know, and I don't think they will. I think they're going to take some time <laughs> getting down there. Time. They'll take it any time they can get it. Here's the draw, McCall. <laughs> 50-yard line, gain of four, second down and six. Spencer Nelms, middle guard, led the defense. Just relaxes a bit. Running behind a fine offensive line. Pitt known for their fine offensive oh, line. Oh, he goes right behind Fraley. Let's see if he ever goes down. He's la laying on the pile. Never goes down. No, but it had been blown dead. So there Forward is the defense momentum. does relax. Forward momentum. Yep. Second down and six, 50-yard line. 4.15 and counting, time remaining in the game. And Jimmy being chased, rolls out of the sack, throws, it is good, complete to Wallow. 40-yard line, first down, gain of 10. Pepper Johnson with the tackle, a good scramble by John Kajimi. Great movement by Kajimi, makes the play. He was sacked, Morrow 57. Good move by the quarterback, keeps his composure, finds where he is, finds where the defense is, sees the entire field. Here we'll take a look at Wallace, runs down, that's his pattern, it's a hook. Now he starts sliding to the inside, makes himself available to the quarterback, and makes a big first down. They spotted at the 39-yard line, first down. Here's McCall, Joe McCall, right side. McCall to the 31-yard line, gain of eight, second down and two. Pittsburgh. Underway, Roland Tatum with the tackle. They have their offense going. Started back at their own 12-yard line. You talk about an offensive line. Joe Moore, the offensive line coach, has had a few good ones over the years. Russ Grimm, who's in the Pro Bowl this year. Mark May, Jimbo Colbert. Now Fralick and Sweeney, this year's team. Good offensive linemen. Don't forget Durando, Petty John, and Tony Brown. Second down and two. This is Mike Bailey. Bailey to the 26-yard line. He has five in the first down. Three minutes, 13 seconds. Time remaining in the Fiesta Bowl. The Panthers trail by one, 21-20. This point, Charlie, would be a 42-yard field goal. And as we mentioned earlier, Schubert, their fine kicker, Hurt his knee the first uh, first week out here and is back in Pittsburgh now, so they do not have their regular field goal kicker. 14th play of the drive. Can Jimmy to throw? In zone, coverage overthrow. Wallace pulled double coverage. He gets a crowd when he throws deep. It'll be second down and 10 at the 26. <laughs> he, had, he had at least double coverage, yeah. maybe triple coverage. John Can Jimmy forcing that ball a little bit. Lucky it wasn't picked off, but he threw it. He threw it in a position where it wouldn't be picked off, and that, that you have to give him credit for. 27, Snuffy Everett, the junior. Regular season, two of four field goals, his long 45. 
0 for 1 in the Fiesta Bowl, hitting the upright from 33 yards away. Now the Panthers want to talk it over. They take a timeout, stopping the clock. 2.53, time remaining in Fiesta Bowl 13. As we come down to the wire, we'll be back in a moment. Toyota is turning the truck world upside down, including the competition's V6s. Introducing the new... So stay with us today on NBC. But it's not over here. Second and 10, 26-yard line pressure. Pass is complete. Clint Wilson with two touchdown receptions. 16 receptions on the regular season. One touchdown regular season. He scored two here. One a reception, the other fumble recovery in the end zone when McCall got to the one. Let's go back to the last play. Looking downfield, he avoids the rush, just dumps the ball off to the outlet. Wilson is tied in, coming across. Charlie, they need to get two more good plays in. They need to get at least down inside the 10-yard line for, for Foge Fazio to really feel confident with their new kicker. And Jimmy has thrown for 314 yards, 29 of 41. As his man, and he misses him. He was open. Dwight Collins was open, and can Jimmy missed him. Well, he missed him because they had a blitz. Gale was coming. Number two was blitzing in there. Pressure defense by Ohio State. We mentioned can Jimmy throwing for 314 yards. That is his career high. Fie Fiesta Bowl record 347. Go ahead. Excuse me, Charlie. Right. You saw Foge hugging Snuffy Everett as he was coming out to try the kick. So it does come down to the attempt. 27 yard line, an attempt of 37 yards for Snuffy Everett and the lead in the Fiesta Bowl, 243, 17th play of the drive. Oh yes, he does it. All right. Snuffy celebrates. He says, wait a minute, we got time to play. Don't, don't, don't go running out of the field. The junior, Stuffy Everett. <laughs> he looks like a kicker. <laughs> and Stuffy celebrates. <laughs> Stuffy looks like he's a little overweight oh, yes, <laughs> to <is>. me. <laughs> but a good kick. You know, we that's, said that's as high as he's jumped in his life. <laughs> Two minutes, 39 seconds left to go. It is now Ohio State 21 and Pitt 23. 67 yard drive, 17 plays, leading the field goal. 514. Five minutes, 14 seconds consumed on the drive. Now look who's there. Keith Byers, number 41, along with John Wildred. And Byers in this ball game, 99 yards, touchdown kickoff. We've had a little bit of everything happen. Now, do you kick the ball deep to him, or do you scrub it again? I'd go for a field goal. No, you can't do that. The way Tom Zach's been playing, and Byers with two minutes and 39 seconds, this game is not over with. It's a cliche, but it's the truth. Most, most cliches are the truth. By and Court kicking off. Picked oh. up at the 11-yard line. Woolridge, but his knee was down. They're going to blow the play dead. Back at the 10, just outside the 10-yard line. So Ohio State with just over two and a half minutes. Let's go back to the play. Can't do this. Puts his knee down to catch the ball. Notice that Pittsburgh kicked the ball away from Keith Byers. First down, 10-yard line. Buckeyes have the ball with 2.36 remaining. Now Ohio State has Rich Spangler as a kicker, field goal kicker, and Paul Allen as a field goal kicker. Incomplete. Anderson, the intended receiver, Tom Zach's throw was just short. Troy Hill had the coverage for Pitt. This is a thing that's a little bit hard for me to understand, Charlie. Tom Zach, play action fake. You know you're going to be throwing the football now. Just let the quarterback drop straight back so he can see the full range of the field so he doesn't have to see where the linebackers are. You, you always have to know linebackers, defensive backs, 
Just drop back when you know you have to throw and throw the football. Second down and 10. It is complete over the middle. The ball popped loose in the end zone, but the play has been blown dead about the 14-yard line. Jemison with the reception. That is his seventh of the ball game. Apke makes a great play here. It's a little crossing pattern. Apke in his zone, sees it all the way. It's going to be a good linebacker. He is a good linebacker, filling in for Adesert. Ball comes out at the end. All right, Steve, good job. Seven receptions, 92 yards in the ball game for Jemison. Third down, six. This one complete to Byers. Byers first down out of bounds. 28-yard line, gain of 14. Now, one minute, 51 seconds left to go. It Fiesta Bowl 13. Ohio State with the football trailing by two. 23-20, Nebraska number one. Miami the home favorite. Comes at lots of time, incomplete at the 44-yard line, going to John Frank. And that's where it really gets dangerous. When he looks downfield, when Tom Zach can look downfield, look downfield, and his primary receiver is covered. We'll see here is a fake. Now, nobody's covered. Now it gets dangerous when he can break outside the pocket. You see he had a receiver wide open. Jemison, I believe it was, hit him wide open. It, it disrupts the entire flow of the receivers and the entire coverage, and then you can get a big play. This is one of the two field goal kickers for Ohio State. That Rich Spangler, number 87, Paul Allen, is the other one. Could be either kicker. We don't know yet. We don't know if it'll get that far. Here's Byer. Breaks the tackle. Fights his way across the 35 and out of bounds, stopping the clock with a minute 39. But the Buckeyes need to pick up a lot of real estate if either kicker is to come into contention. Tom Flynn for the defense. Earl Bruce looking at his short list, his game plan, will be sending the play in himself. Gain of seven to the 35. So it'll be third down and three. One minute, 39 seconds left to go in the Fiesta Bowl. Third and three. Roman Bates. Bates has the first down at the 42-yard line. He needed three. He got seven. One minute, 33 seconds left. Steve Abke, the freshman, makes the tackle. And quickly, an opportunity here to thank a lot of people. Executive Director of the Fiesta Bowl, Bruce Skinner. From Arizona State University Athletic Department, our good friend, gold medalist, Herman Frazier. From Ohio State, the President, Dr. Edward Jennings. Director of Athletics, Hugh Heinemann. The SID Sports Information Director, Marv Homan. The head coach, Earl Bruce, his entire staff. University of Pittsburgh, the Chancellor, Dr. Wesley Posmer. The Director of Athletics, Dr. Edward Bozick. Sports Information Director Jim O'Brien, head coach, Boj Fazio, his entire staff, and also Steve Snap of OSU and Pat Hanlon of Pitt, our spotters working in the booth with us. So, and once again, we are riding with our friends from the Special Olympics. It's been a great week. It really has, hasn't it? Here's the pressure. The pass is incomplete. Fires the intended receiver. Made the interception. Go, go, go. Bill Moss. Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Honorable mention All-America, number 71 for the Panthers. Second down and 10. Ohio State at their own 42. Comes out. Pressure again. Close. Almost intercepted by Troy Benson, but he couldn't hold on. The wind, by the way, blowing from left to right now at 18 miles an hour. The wind is at Tom Zach's back. He has a receiver down the middle who is open, tries to get the ball to him, and just didn't pull up and get his arm behind it. Almost intercepted. Troy Benson with four interceptions during the regular season. Couldn't hang on to this one. 121 left to go. Plenty of time, Charlie, to move the ball down and score. They've got some timeouts left. And, of course, in college, the ball, the clock is stopped whenever you make a first down. Third down and ten. Come on, come on! Come on! Ball is incomplete. 
It will be fourth down and 10 for Ohio State. The Buckeyes ball on their own 42 yard line. They have one timeout remaining. Pittsburgh has one timeout remaining. He left to go. There's a leading receiver on the Ohio State team and the most valuable player, John Frank, getting the play from Earl Bruce taking it in. I wouldn't be surprised if it would go to John Frank because he's been their bread and butter all year. All Big Ten tight end. Four six speed. Three nine. That's his great point out. Fourth and ten. Break to the draw. Here's the pass. It's there. It is John Frank. Academic. All America. All Big Ten. Flag is down. Flag down back at the 37 yard line. And Bob, you call it. You said you go to your bread and butter man as a quarterback. You know who you want to go to. You like those tight ends that can get open, and you like those backs that can catch the ball out of the backfield. Offsetting penalty. It's a double foul. Did it occur after the play or before? If it occurred after the play, they get the first down. Right. And it looks as though that is what's going to be uh, the case. The microphone not working. It is a dead ball foul after the play was over. You're right. It is a first down, and Ohio State has possession at the pit 45-yard line. New life, fourth down and 10 or whatever. John Frank, four receptions, 54 yards. No more statistics, I promise. Right. 109, only one, and that's the score. Wide side of the field is this way. You got Frank and the wide side. You almost look to have something come this way. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on back, come on. As time to throw goes back across the field to Byers. Incomplete. 59 seconds left. Second and 10. You've seen the play selection. You've seen the choice. What do you like? What would you call? Well, I would keep looking to the tight end. Tom Zach is doing a good job of reading the coverage. That time he was throwing to the wide side. Nothing was open. He came back against the flow, tried to hit Byers, which is a good choice, because if you can get the ball to Byers on a crossing pattern, he may break some tackles and go for 40 yards. Inside the 40. Chris Dolman for the defense. Clock is stopped with a timeout. They're going to mark the ball at the 39 yard line. Charge to Ohio State. Rich Spangler. His longest this year, 36 yards. Instead of just his leg. It's all right, though. Made a big kick, Snuffy. He sure did. The kick of his life. Conversion miss, kick the field goal, tat everything. Extra point and tip. He throws this ball back into the short side of the field. Something that you wouldn't expect. Three wide receivers down the middle. Great play. Jemison. And a souvenir touchdown. of the stands. And if you're Foge Fazio, this is the way you react. Bo just pointing where all the receivers was going. That's what he was doing. Well, that's a stoic response. Well, he, he saw the bowl game, Charlie. It should really be a great one. Oh, Tom yeah. Osborne and his Cornhuskers never having won the national championship. Tom was down in Miami, tried to win it a few years ago. And, of course, Howard Schnellenberger turning that program around has been talking national championship for a long time. But don't forget the Rose Bowl. We'll be going there right after this game as Tom Brown returns the kickoff. And the Rose Bowl okay, is always up in 1967 <laughs> when you went out and took Purdue to a win we, over USC. We rolled over. You rolled over 14 to 13. Right. Had it going away. 38 yard line. Could Jimmy to throw. Pass is complete at the 45 to Clint Wilson. 
26 seconds and counting. The clock moving down on Fiesta Bowl 13. They stop it now with 25 seconds. And Ohio State has the lead, 28-23. Yeah. And, and both ball clubs and all the players involved certainly have done their best here. Pass is complete for the other. The lateral. And then out of bounds to stop the clock. This game's not Bill over yet. Wallace. And they ought to do it again. The same play the other way. Chuck Scales and Bill Wallace teaming up. Play. Miami Dolphins a couple of years ago made this famous good execution. Could have, the ball could have been out a little bit more out in front of him, but they're on the 40-yard line, 35-yard line. Can Jimmy to Wallace to Scales. That last play, squeezing every possible bit of excitement out of this ball game. I don't think anybody has told Pittsburgh that the game is over with yet. Can Jimmy has had a great day throwing the football. He has really brought his team back time after time. To the 30. Trying to get to the sideline, 24-yard line. Seven seconds. Did he get the first down? If he did, that will stop the clock. They'll have to move the chain. Seven seconds, because Jimmy is down. Chance to thank Ross Schneiderman, our statistician. Ken Edmondson, our producer. Andy Rosenberg, our director. Everybody in the truck. It has really been an exciting ball game, an exciting telecast, setting up the day on NBC. We'll be leaving here. We'll be going to the Rose and then on to the Orange Bowl. You get out of oh. bounds, get the first down. The left ankle. Looks like he rolled up the back of his left ankle. When he planted it, let's see if we can back up, look at it again. That left ankle is planted. It goes down and gets caught yeah, underneath. He's, he, he's not oh, worried yeah. about his injury. He was worried about getting the football and trying to get up to get the uh, next playoff. John Jimmy. What an outstanding day that he has had. He's completed 31 of 42. He has thrown for 342 yards. Play, but he'll be back to play another day. And your former head coach, Don Shula, says failure isn't fatal and success isn't final. It's very true. As, of course, can Jimmy is off the field of play because the clock will start. Here it is. Clock is wound and counting. Now that stops it just going out of bounds. Three seconds now. Now we get together and go to the end zone. Oh, I like that. That's a good call. We are, I'm not sure that Foge was that thrill with that call from his reaction. But well, why don't we go to the end zone? If you've got it, you win, and if you don't, it's all over. We're wringing well, every bit of excitement out of this one. You certainly are. There's, they're on the 24-yard line. Ohio State was lined up that time with its three deep defensive backs in the end zone. So possibly you could do the alley-oop, put three wide receivers, let them all run into the end zone, and then if you get the right tip, if you're lucky, you're going to get the touchdown. Or you could do the flea flicker again. That's right. Everybody's too deep. Send them down, hook them up, lateral back. Here it is. Three seconds to go. Now, time has run out. It is knocked down. The ball is scored. 28.